Is there nothing you want to say, Louis? I... Uh, it wasn't me. I, I, I didn't kill her. I, I'd much rather have met you under different circumstances. Lord Mortimer, believe me, I'm very conscious of the gravity of the situation. <laughs> Everything seems to point to me as the one who killed Elizabeth, but I swear I am innocent. Out of respect for your mother, rest assured that I do want to believe you. And all I want is to be able to prove it to you. When do we start? We already have. Tell me, Louis. How do you feel? My lord, don't take this the wrong way, but what do you mean by a question like that? You find me unconscious in front of Miss Adams' body and you ask me how I feel? I am very serious, Louis. I'm concerned for you. Where are you going with this, my lord? Sarah's behavior grew odd before her disappearance. Her attitude changed, she became prey to outbursts of violence and a number of temporary absences. I'm just trying to make sure that you don't go getting lost like your mother did. You're not suggesting that I might have killed Elizabeth and that I don't remember, are you? I don't know, Louis. It's just that what with your mother and now you, it's rather a lot. The more I take stock of the situation, the more I'm under the impression that you've been set up. But before going any further, I must inform you that Sir Gregory is about to arrive. He is coming to question you about the murder of poor Elizabeth, whom he was very fond of. He is quite determined to find the culprit, whomever they may be. So, convince him of your innocence. Then we can continue this conversation. William, I would like to see you a moment before we begin. In private. Let's step outside a moment. Louis, this will only take a few moments. chance to look around. Please, sit back down, Louis. This sort of behavior is not working in your favor, young man. Monsieur de Richer, you were found standing over Miss Adams' body. We must shed some light on your responsibility in this tragedy. We shall then decide on your fate. But you must know that if you do not convince us of your innocence, it will cost you dearly. Now you are going to tell us everything that happened last night, without leaving any detail out. First things first, how did your evening begin? Duchess Hillsborough and I were returning to our rooms when Elizabeth came upon us. Oh. So you were with the Duchess? Yes, we were talking. We were walking up the stairs, and it was late. Where did you come from? Uh, I don't remember. I, I think we came from the Grand Hall. Oh, isn't that surprising? Do continue. 
we were heading for our rooms when Elizabeth burst into the corridor, barely dressed. She was panic-stricken and insisted on speaking to me. So I found myself in Elizabeth's room. We sat down together. She insisted we have a drink or she would refuse to confide in me. Hmm. What exactly did she want to speak about at such a late hour? Well, she was terrorized by the fact that you invited her at the same time as my mother. She was surely victim to misconceptions, but felt trapped. She was convinced she was going to die. But why? Let's say she didn't believe in coincidences, shall we? You'll admit that the chances of my mother and Elizabeth bumping into each other on this island are pretty slim. Sorry if I'm putting my nose where it doesn't belong, my lord, but why did you invite them at the same time? Elizabeth spoke to you about her past. She came here so you could help her fight her demons. She must have told you about her encounters with my mother. Remember, Louis, I was not the one who invited dear Elizabeth. Indeed, it was me. And you seem to forget it was you that we found right next to poor Elizabeth's body. You had better start proving your innocence rather than trying to cast doubts on William here. Let's finish this, William. I don't rightly know how we can give the benefit of the doubt to an individual who can manipulate the truth to absurdity. Louis, unfortunately, you haven't managed to convince us. You will agree that you had the time and the motive to commit the murder. I... I am devastated, but I must agree with Gregory and declare you guilty. Gentlemen, if you please, wait. There is something else. Elizabeth ended up telling me why my mother had tried to treat her. The voices in her head, is that it? She spoke to you about them too, didn't she? Gentlemen, I'm not a doctor, but she was persuaded she heard voices in her head. You don't think she might have killed herself, By stabbing you? herself nine times. I find that extremely unlikely, don't you? What? Stabbed nine times? It appears that the murderer walked up and stabbed her several times from behind. We counted nine gashes in all. All of them were relatively shallow, and they were all given from roughly the same angle of attack. Traces of blood appear to prove that she was standing throughout the attack. If that's all the proof you have before dispensing justice, th then you'll have innocent blood on your hands. There's no proof I, I could have committed the murder. You do know, sir, that the first impression is often the right one. We found you near dear Elizabeth's body. What could be simpler? Goodbye. <laughs>